Hey everyone, Miss J here. I'm going to read you today chapters 8, 9, and 10 of Holes by Rita Sasha. I hope you're enjoying the book so far. Uh, my guest cat today is Tofino, but she's asleep. Please do read along with me. Let's go back. Chapter 8. A lot of people don't believe in curses. A lot of people don't believe in yellow spotted lizards either, but if one bites you, it doesn't make a difference whether you believe in it or not. Actually, it's kind of odd that scientists named the lizard after its yellow spots. Each lizard has exactly 11 yellow spots, but the spots are hard to see on its yellow green body. The lizard is from six to 10 inches long and has, a big, and has big red eyes. In truth, its eyes are yellow and the skin around the eyes is red, but everyone always speaks of its red eyes. It also has black teeth and a milky white tongue. Looking at one, you would have thought it should be named a red-eyed lizard, or a black-toothed lizard, or perhaps a white-tongued lizard. If you've ever been close enough to see the yellow spots, you are probably dead. The yellow-spotted lizards like to live in holes, which offer shade from the sun and protection from predatory birds. Up to 20 lizards may live in one hole. They have strong, powerful legs and can leap out of very deep holes to attack their prey. They eat small animals, insects, certain cactus thorns, and the shells of sunflower seeds. Chapter 9 Stanley sh stood in the shower and let the cold water pour over his hot and sore body. It was four minutes of heaven. For the second day in a row, he didn't use soap. He was too tired. There was no roof over the shower building, and the walls were raised up six inches off the ground, except in the corners. There was no drain in the floor. The water ran out under the walls and evaporated quickly in the sun. He put on his clean set of orange clothes. He returned to his tent, put his dirty clothes in his crate, got out his pen and box of stationery, and headed to the rec room. A sign on the door said, Rec Room, with a W. Nearly everything in the room was broken. The TV, the pinball machine, the furniture, even the people looked broken, with their worn-out bodies sprawled over the various chairs and sofas. X-ray and Armpit were playing pool. The surface of the table reminded Stanley of the surface of the lake. It was full of bumps and holes because so many people had carved their initials into it. There was a hole in the far wall, and an electric fan had been placed in front of it. Cheap air conditioning. At least the fan worked. As Stanley made his way across the room, he tripped over an outstretched leg. Hey, watch it, said an orange lump on a chair. You watch it, muttered Stanley, too tired to care. What did you say? The lump demanded. Nothing, said Stanley. The lump rose. He was almost as big as Stanley and a lot tougher. You said something. He poked his fat finger in Stanley's neck. What did you say? A crowd quickly formed around them. Be cool, said X-Ray. He put his hand on Stanley's shoulder. You don't want to mess with the caveman, he warned. The caveman's cool, said Armpit. I'm not looking for trouble, Stanley said. I'm just tired, that's all. The lump grunted. X-Ray and Armpit led Stanley over to a couch. Squid slid over to make room as Stanley sat down. Did you see the caveman back there? X-Ray asked. The caveman's one tough dude, said Squid and he lightly punched Stanley's arm. Stanley leaned back against the torn vinyl upholstery. Despite his shower, his body still radiated heat. I wasn't trying to start anything, he said. The last thing he wanted to do after killing himself all day on the lake was to get in a fight with a boy called the Caveman. He was glad X-Ray and Armpit had come to his rescue. Well, how'd you like your first hole? asked Squid. Stanley groaned, and the other boys laughed. Well, the first hole's the hardest, said Stanley. No way, said X-Ray. The second hole's a lot harder. You're hurting before you even get started. If you think you're sore now, just wait and see how you'll feel tomorrow morning, right? That's right, said Squid. Plus, the fun's gone, said X-Ray. The fun? asked Stanley. Don't lie to me, said X-Ray. I bet you always wanted to dig a big hole, am I right? Stanley had never really thought about it before, but he knew better than to tell X-Ray he wasn't right. Every kid in the world wants to dig a great big hole, said X-Ray, to China, right? Right, said Stanley. See what I mean, said X-Ray? That's what I'm saying. But now the fun's gone, and you've still got to do it again, and again, and again. Camp fun and games, said Stanley. What's in the box? asked Squid. 
Stanley forgot, had forgotten that he had brought it. Uh, paper. I was going to write a letter to my mother. Your mother? Laughed Squid. She'll worry if I don't. Squid scowled. Stanley looked around the room. This was the one place in camp where the boys could enjoy themselves. And what did they do? They wrecked it. The glass on the TV was smashed as if someone had put his foot through it. Every table and chair seemed to be missing at least one leg. Everything leaned. He waited to write the letter until after Squid had gotten up and joined the game of pool. Dear Mom, today was my first day at camp and I've already made some friends. We've been out on the lake all day, so I'm pretty tired. Once I pass the swimming test, I'll get to learn how to water ski. I... He stopped writing as he became aware that somebody was reading over his shoulder. He turned to see Zero, standing behind the couch. I don't want her to worry about me, he explained. Zero said nothing. He just stared at the letter with a serious, almost angry look on his face. Stanley slipped it back into the stationary box. Did the shoes have red X's on the back? Zero asked him. It took Stanley a moment, but then he realized Zero was asking about Clyde Livingston's shoes. Yes, they did, he said. He wondered how Zero knew that. Brand X was a popular brand of sneakers. Maybe Clyde Livingston made a commercial for them. Zero stared at him for a moment with the same intensity with which he had been staring at the letter. Stanley poked his finger through a hole in the final coach and pulled out some of the stuffing. He wasn't aware of what he was doing. Come on, caveman, dinner, said Armpit. You come in, caveman, said Squid. Stanley looked around to see that Armpit and Squid were talking to him. Ah, uh, sure, he said. He put the piece of stationery back in the box, then got up and followed the boys out to the tables. The lump wasn't the caveman. He was. He shrugged his left shoulder. It was better than barf bag. Chapter 10 Stanley had no trouble falling asleep, but morning came much too quickly. Every muscle and joint in his body ached as he tried to get out of bed. He didn't think it was possible, but his body hurt more than it had the day before. It wasn't just his arms and back, but his legs, ankles, and waist also hurt. The only thing that got him out of bed was knowing that every second he wasted meant he was one second closer to the rising of the sun. He hated the sun. He could hardly lift his spoon during breakfast, and then he was out on the lake, his spoon replaced by a shovel. He found a crack in the ground and began his second hole. He stepped on the shovel blade and pushed on the very back of the shaft with the base of his thumb. This hurt less than trying to hold the shaft with his blistered fingers. As he dug, he was careful to dump the dirt far away from the hole. He needed to save the area around the hole for when his hole was much deeper. He didn't know if he'd ever get that far. X-ray was right. The second hole was the hardest. It would take a miracle. As long as the sun wasn't out, he removed his cap and used it to help protect his hands. Once the sun rose, he would have to put it back on his head. His neck and forehead had been badly burned the day before. He took it one shovelful at a time and tried not to think of the awesome task that lay ahead of him. After an hour or so, his sore muscles seemed to loosen up a little bit. He grunted as he tried to stick his shovel into the dirt. His cap slipped out from under his fingers and the shovel fell free. He let it lie there. He took a drink from his canteen. He guessed that the water truck should be coming soon, but he didn't finish all the water just in case he was wrong. He'd learn to wait until he saw the truck before drinking that last drop. The sun wasn't yet up, but its rays arced over the horizon and brought light to the sky. He reached down to pick up his cap, and there next to it he saw a wide, flat rock. As he put his cap on his head, he continued to look down at the rock. He picked it up. He thought he could see the shape of a fish fossilized in it. He rubbed off some dirt, and the outline of a fish became clearer. The sun peeked over the horizon, and he could actually see tiny white lines where every one of the fish's bones had been. He looked at the barren land all around him. True, everyone referred to this area as the lake, but it was still hard to believe that this dry wasteland was once full of water. Then he remembered what Mr. Sir and Mr. Pendansky had both said. If he dug up anything interesting, he should report it to one of them. If the warden liked it, he would get the rest of the day off. He looked back down at his fish. He had found his miracle. He continued to dig, though very slowly, as he waited for the water truck. He didn't want to bring attention to his find, afraid that one of the other boys might try to take it from him. He tossed the rock, face down beside his dirt pile, as if it had no special value. A short while later, he saw the cloud of dirt heading across the lake. The truck stopped and the boys lined up. 
<clears throat> they always lined up in the same order, Stanley realized, no matter who got there first. X-ray was always at the front of the line. Then came armpit, squid, zigzag, magnet, and zero. Stanley got in line behind zero. He was glad to be at the back, so no one would notice the fossil. His pants had very large pockets, but the rocks still made a bulge. Mr. Pendanski filled each boy's canteen until Stanley was the only one left. I found something, Stanley said, taking it out of his pocket. Mr. Pendanski reached for Stanley's canteen, but Stanley handed him the rock instead. What's this? said Stanley. Er, what's this? It's a fossil, said Stanley. See the fish? Mr. Pendanski looked at it again. See, you can even see all of its little bones, said Stanley. Interesting, said Mr. Pendanski. Let me have your canteen. Stanley handed it to him. Mr. Pendanski filled it and then returned it. So do I get the rest of the day off? What for? You know, you said if I found something interesting, the warden would give me the day off. Mr. Pendanski laughed as he gave the fossil back to Stanley. Sorry, Stanley. The warden isn't interested in fossils. Let me see that, said Magnet, taking the rock from Stanley. Stanley continued to stare at Mr. Pendanski. Hey, Zig, dig this rock. Cool, said Zigzag. Stanley saw his fossil being passed around. I don't see nothing, said X-Ray. He took off his glasses, wiped them on his dirty clothes, and put them back on. See, look at the little fishy, said Armpit. That brings us through the end of chapter 10. I hope you're enjoying the book. Have a great day.